when I got a call from uh, Rob Marshall and John DeLuca, we, we'd like to talk to you about something. Um, that became an immediate priority, and they said, uh, sequel to Mary Poppins, and I said, who's playing Mary Poppins? Uh, and they said, Emily Blunt, and I said, oh, that's good. <laughs> um, and, and, and honestly, I can't, I can't give them enough credit for seeing this role in me, because when I'm playing Hamilton, I mean, there's no childlike wonder in Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> uh, he, he has a very traumatic early life. He goes on that stage and he wants to devour the world and he wants to move so fast and he wants to do everything. Whereas Jack in this movie, as they pitched him to me, has this childlike sense of wonder. He has this, um, you know, he's, he's in touch with that imagination you all see in your kids when they can sort of play in their own imagination for hours. Jack sort of never lost that. Um, and, and that was, um, I feel so humbled that he saw that in me. And then, you know, it, was, it came along at the perfect time for my family too. You know, we had finished a year of performing Hamilton and then I chopped my hair off and left the country and jumped into <laughs> Mary Poppins' universe. It was like beautiful. And your favorite part of making the film or favorite experience in the film? There are so many. I mean, you've seen the film. There are a lot of highs on a movie like this. Um, and coming from the theater where you're, you're, the only thing that changes in the performance is the audience and your energy that day to go, okay, Thursday we'll be shutting down Buckingham Palace and riding with 500 bicyclists. And Friday you'll be, you know, dancing with the penguins. Um, you know, those kind of, of moments are, are really sort of unforgettable. But for me, um, I brought my son to set every time we filmed a musical number uh, and to watch his eyes like saucers while daddy danced with you know, what seems like 500 dancers and bikers. I'll never forget the look on his face as long as I live. Emily Mortimer, I remember in the making of the film, we had a lot of logistical challenges to get you back and forth to your family, but you seemed undaunted and so determined to participate in this movie. And of course, your work is so quite lovely in it. Just your, your feeling stepping into the shoes of a, of a character that was a child, the world knows, is now grown up, and, and the experience of being in a musical film as opposed to, to a drama. I've got so many things to say. Um, uh, I, I felt from the minute that I met Rob that I wanted to be part of this film. Um, I, of course, Mary Poppins was a huge part of my childhood as it as it is of everybody's, um, but it was really, and, and, and it was exciting to think that, that, that they were going to make another movie of it, but, and, and daunting too, obviously, but it was meeting Rob and hearing him talk like he has just now about why he so, was so determined to make this film and uh, that just really inspired me. Um, and, and, um, and, I, and, and, and that doesn't often happen, and, when, and I've, I'm quite old now, and I've done a lot of movies, <laughs> And I know enough about life to know, um, or, or life as an actor or performer or whatever, to know that when somebody inspires you and makes you excited uh, about the idea of a, of a movie or a project or whatever, it's, it's a rare thing and, and you just have to go with it. You just have to try to jump on that train if you can. And so I, I emerged from meeting Rob and John and, and, and rung up my agents immediately and said, I just have to be part of this movie no matter what. I just want to be in it. I just want to be help Rob tell this story. It just felt like incredible good fortune every time I walked on the set to be there and um, and as Lynn said, just every single moment was, was magical. It was like sort of intravenous entertainment. It was almost dangerous. <laughs> um, it was almost too much at times. Um, and, um, and, and getting to know Ben and having that friendship was immediate and so sweet. And it was just, ma it was the whole thing was, was, was magical and, um, and, and something I'll treasure forever. And uh, I feel very lucky to have been a part of. And as to the bit about how to do this part, um, I don't know really, I don't know really, it was, it, it was like Rob, it was a sleight of hand of Rob's where he is the puppet master and he's, absolutely kind of Mary Poppins himself. Like it, it's a stealth, he is Mary Poppins. It's, uh, he's Mary Poppins without the parrot. Um, <laughs> but he's, he's like, you just sort of know what to do without having to worry about it too much. And he's protecting you from all the anxiety and the, the sort of stress of the burden of knowing that this is, this is such a huge thing and this is such a huge 
um, you know, legacy and we're in charge of it. And he does, there's none of that came into it. It was just, we've got to just do this. We've got to have fun doing this. We've got to do right by this in the best, sweetest way. And it was just a, a joy. You know, there's a lovely Easter egg in the film. There are many Easter eggs in the film. And one of them, of course, is a, is a cameo by Karen Dotris, who played the original Jane. What was that like meeting her in, in, in that moment? It was extraordinary. She's such a great, cool lady. So funny. Wicked sense of humor. Really down to earth and and ballsy and she she came she came to do the cameo in the there's a little moment where Ben's emerging from the house with his briefcase late and he bumps into her and we all walked onto the set for the first time with her and um, she walked onto Cherry Tree Lane for the first time in 54 years or however long it is since the uh, first movie was made and and she just melted. I mean, she just sort of it crumbled. And it was so moving being there with her while that happened and seeing that. We were fortunate to have a number of those kind of experiences. Just really quickly, maybe just real quick about what it was like having Dick Van Dyke and what he said and how he came onto the set. I mean, every one of us was there. And it was beyond. I don't think any of us could even breathe that day because we couldn't believe that we were touching that and he was basically playing the same old banker that he played he grabbed my hand as we walked onto the set and he turned to me and he said something i will never forget he said i feel the same spirit here on this set that i did on the first film and that was you know that was the dream come true right there i was so moved when um my favorite moment on the set of the whole of the whole filming was when a after dick did his monologue uh, to the kids in the bank, Rob, we're all waiting for Rob to call cut, and because he, he was waiting quite a long time. And, and then I, he, he couldn't because of all the emotion, he was crying, and he couldn't literally say the word. And it was, and just realizing that was so, so touching. I think Emily called cut because I, <laughs> <laughs> or said it's, it's bossy, over. yeah. <laughs>